Hello everybody, it's Matt, your friendly neighborhood technician, doing a full diagnostics on a 2000 Toyota Corolla 1.8 liter. Now this vehicle came to me with complaints that there was low compression in cylinder 2 and 3, and so therefore the customer believes that the whole engine needs to be rebuilt. However, I don't think we need to rebuild the whole engine. I think what we're dealing with is a blown head gasket. So right now I'm just going through the process and steps to collect the data to go ahead and justify uh, pulling the head off of this and replacing the head gasket. Now what I have so far is I've got everything set up to run compression tests and I've already pulled my OBD2 codes and uh, what I've got is uh, a random misfire code plus a specific misfire in cylinders 2, 3, and 4. Now also upon visual inspection I also found that the oil is extremely low and also interesting enough we have low coolant. So it's low inside of the radiator and the reservoir itself down there is completely dry. Now also I gathered, interesting enough as well, uh, what I call freeze frame data. In other words, the one code that set the computer off and caused it to turn that check engine light on. So I've got my OBD2 set up here. I'm going to go in here and we are going to check our freeze frame all right so the hard code that we actually have is going to be the cylinder misfire number three and that took place looks like when the vehicle it almost looks like it took place upon startup or when the vehicle was idling. You see the RPMs are 703 and the vehicle speed was zero. So I'm just going to add that to the data and this just pushes me even further to believe that we got a blown head gasket. So right now... Let's uh, get set up to run our... Uh, compression tests and I've got my compression tester set up in cylinder number one right now and I'm gonna get my computer going so I can record some live data while I'm turning this over I'll pause it here to spare you the wait time okay so I'm going to start recording live data as I turn the engine over as you can see my computer is, is recording and so here we go, compression test number one. Here we go. Okay, now the reading we have on that compression test is going to be 90 PSI. So we'll go and uh, we'll record that. So I'm gonna pause this video for just a second and I'm gonna move to cylinder number two. Okay, we have now moved to cylinder number two, and we're going to go ahead and compression test cylinder number two. And cylinder number two looks like we got about 58 PSI right there. So I'm going to pause it. I'm going to go record that data. Okay, so we recorded our variable of 58 PSI in cylinder 2. Now, 90 PSI, it's, you know, that's not necessarily the sign of a bad cylinder. That's the sign of a weak cylinder. And that's not even necessarily the sign of a cylinder losing compression. But then when you have a variable as large as 90 to 58 PSI, there's definitely something wrong. And I'm still leaning towards head gasket. So now we're on cylinder number 3. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to test cylinder number three. Okay, so cylinder number three fared even worse. Cylinder number three is completely dead. And it came out at what looks like 28 PSI. That is a completely dead cylinder with no compression whatsoever. So I'm going to pause it, I'm going to record that, and we'll go to cylinder number four. Okay, we are now on cylinder number four. Our last cylinder, number three, came out to 28 PSI. So here we go with cylinder number four.
And cylinder number four came out with the same reading as cylinder number three, 28 PSI. Okay, so with the data that we have, we're going to go ahead and move forward with our head gasket theory. And uh, what I've done, I actually took a couple quarts and uh, I've just topped off just topped off the coolant there. It was a little bit lower than I thought. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start the car and I'm going to see if uh, any coolant comes out of that radiator cap. And then uh, if so, we'll go from there. Okay, so there is no coolant coming out of there. It looks pretty much undisturbed. So we're going to put our radiator cap back on. But now with it running cold, we're going to go take a peek at the tailpipe. See what we got coming out of the exhaust. Now what I'm looking for back here is I'm looking for blue smoke. I want to see, just because you don't have a milkshake in your oil, or just because you don't have hydrocarbons in your uh, radiator or in your coolant, doesn't mean you don't have a blown head gasket. Uh, what could be happening is the coolant could be leaking into the cylinder and burning off, which would then would produce a blue smoke out of the uh, tailpipe here. But I don't have that. So this is why diagnoses get interesting. We have all the justification right up to this point to call this a blown head gasket. Unfortunately, not all the data is going to fully add up for a blown head gasket. So we're going to need to stop here and rethink our diagnosis with the data that we have. So that way we can pinpoint this and find justification for either a rebuild or a head gasket. All right, folks. Well, thanks everybody for supporting me. It's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. Until next time.